with WWE creating a system to recruit college athletes and possibly looking to get rid of a championship, this is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for December 2nd. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. While he was brought back to WWE in 2019 to run SmackDown, Eric Bischoff would not last long during that stint before losing that position to Bruce Prichard. Speaking to Renee Paquette, Bischoff touched on today's production meetings in WWE. My first visceral reaction was, this is a waste of a lot of time. You do not need all of those people in one large meeting. When you're going through a format, I don't give a damn. I don't need to know when a graphic is going to hit. The guys in the truck need to know that. They should have their own production meeting. To spend two hours going over that stuff when you really only need an hour tops 45 minutes if you're focused to get through. To tie up all of that stuff, we're not doing other things that they could have actually been doing. We worked out all of that stuff during the week before we got to TV. You sit through the two or three hour production meeting and while you're sitting there starving because you haven't had lunch and you're watching Triple H and Vince McMahon piling down filet mignon and sushi while you're sucking down warm coffee in a styrofoam cup. I thought that was a real waste of time. Here's the best part. Everyone does get to eat lunch and they go Go off and start doing the things they were assigned to do at the end of the elongated luncheon for the McMahon family and then you find out we're tearing stuff up and we're going to start all over again at five o'clock. We're not talking about it. Let's take this match and move it from segment three to segment six or somebody got hurt and let's rebook a match and figure out a way to explain it and make sense. It's not that it's ripping paper. There were like 15 minutes before the show and we're rewriting scenes. Pacquiao would add that during her time in WWE TV shows would be changed moments prior to the show going on air, which would even leave commentators without knowing what they are talking about until the first minute. On Table Talk, tag team wrestling legend and WWE producer Devon Dudley gave an update on his impending back surgery, saying WWE is taking care of it. I saw three different surgeons. The third one, WWE was comfortable with it. I go on December 8th for a minor procedure. I go for the consultation on December 8th and he'll give me the date on when it'll happen. They go in with a thin needle, get the disc, fuse it, move it back to where it needs to be, put the bolt and screw in, and I'm good to go. They said about two or three weeks tops. I've been dealing with this since about 20 10. A lot of us deal with this pain with our backs and sometimes it gets to the point where you can't take it anymore and you have to do something about it. There are other guys when their backs are messed up and they don't have the insurance or money to take care of it. WWE provides great health insurance so I'm able to go see a doctor, a couple of doctors, and have the insurance because I can only imagine what that surgery would cost. With Triple H away from his duties on NXT while he is recovering from his heart procedure, Vince McMahon has taken over proceedings on the brand. Given all the changes and releases, many think Triple H would be better off leaving the company, possibly to start his own promotion. With PW Torch, Wade Keller explained why that will never happen. I was told by somebody in WWE not too long ago that Hunter is not going anywhere. Their familiarity with the family dynamic is such where you know they are familiar enough with the Stephanie Hunter Vince dynamic that Hunter cannot cash out and just leave without it affecting the family dynamic in a way that was just more negative than something Triple H would do. That could change and that person could be wrong, but their hunch was Hunter is either going to work in WWE or not, but not work against them in the pro wrestling business. While many complain about Charlotte Flair getting title shots, she is currently a champion on SmackDown. As she looks set to defend her belt against Sasha Banks, her father Ric Flair said on this podcast that Charlotte should get a similar push to that of Roman Reigns. I don't know because I do feel comfortable saying and I think Roman Reigns is the biggest star right now in the company and could be a crossover and do whatever you want to do. But I'm going to say this attaches if they give Charlotte the push they give Roman Reigns, which I'm surprised they don't. Because the women play such a factor, it's a huge factor in the success of the promotion that they would have the two biggest crossover stars and that would make a huge difference.
with CM Punk recently getting on the mic and trading barbs with MJF, Booker T took to his Hall of Fame podcast to point out that Punk sounded bitter about WWE. The Miz is good at what he does, you know, even MJF. I do not look at MJF as being the best wrestler in the world. However, as far as him going out there and being able to sell tickets and put butts on the seats, he does that exceptionally well. I think, you know, from CM Punk's side, it will always go back to WWE to get a cheap pop. You could say whatever you want about that. I just think, you know, the stuff about Tony Khan needing to get a daughter, you know, that kind of stuff, yeah, I mean, it just rings bitter, you know? I mean, I guess to me, everything that MJF said in that promo, it was hard, bro. It was hardcore. If I was on the opposite end, I would have been throwing up my hands to block some of the punches coming my way. During the first AEW event at Double or Nothing, one of the greatest matches took place between Dustin and Cody Rhodes. While we tried to get this match to happen in WWE, Dustin would tell Way of the Blade that Vince McMahon did not think that bout was good enough for WrestleMania. I had fought so hard every single year to get to work with my brother at WrestleMania, and point blank, Vince would always tell me, this match is not good enough to be on WrestleMania. That pissed me off. That pissed me off bad. And it was hurtful. And it did something to me. It really depleted every ounce of passion that I had. I fought for it every single year, Cody too. We both fought for it every year. So to get offered this with Cody and Tony Khan to this new fan base and the substar company AEW on this pay-per-view, and I watched all in on pay-per-view at home. It was like, okay, here we go. Double or nothing, Cody puts out this promo. We've got these two promos, mine and his. They get huge hits. It was like the world just caught fire there with me. And still, I got excited, right? I'm like the kid in the candy store. I'm very excited about this, but not confident at all. I was very lost in my confidence and passion, like I said. And very unsure about my ability to step into the ring with my brother and deliver a very explosive match for him. With WWE recently signing Olympic gold medalist Gable Stevenson to a unique deal for students, the company has announced a next-in-line program. The WWE NIL program has the potential to be transformational to our business. By creating partnerships with elite athletes at all levels across a wide variety of college sports, we will dramatically expand our pool of talent and create a system that readies NCAA competitors for WWE once their collegiate careers come to a close. Triple H spoke to Fast Company about this, saying we immediately saw it as an amazing recruiting tool for us because it allows us to show athletes a path to WWE and engage with them in a way where they can learn more about it. We can learn more about them all while working together and finding out if it's a good fit before they're even finished college and before they even need to make any decisions about what they're going to do in that next stage of their life. In my generation and even more recently, you sort of had to know someone. We put a lot of effort into recruiting athletes and finding athletes to let them know WWE is a potentially lucrative opportunity for them if they're interested and passionate about it. Pro Wrestling Illustrated has come out with their annual rankings for this year as the Young Bucks took the top spot with the Lucha Bros being second, Dangerous Techers being third, the Usos at fourth, and ALK at number five. A statement was put out by PWI as it reads, congratulations to Matt and Nick Jackson. The Young Bucks for ranking number one in the second annual PWI Tag Team 50. To see who else made the cut, grab the digital edition or pre-order the print magazine from pwi-online.com. Given his release from WWE in July, Bray Wyatt could be picked up by a major wrestling promotion. Despite many thinking he would end up in AEW, that has not happened yet. On his podcast, Ric Flair made it clear that AEW should sign him. I most definitely would hire Bray Wyatt. I'm a huge fan of his. The kid can work and talk and he comes up with some incredible ideas. If you aren't crazy about those gimmicks, but when you think that he put the time and effort, those were his thought process. Plus, he's legit, he's a tough kid, he's an amateur wrestler, played football at Troy. I'm just a big fan of his. I like his brother a lot too. You couldn't find a handsomer, more athletic guy. I think if I'm going to hire one guy, I'd hire Bray Wyatt. The last guy I would have fired, if I were Vince, would have been Bray Wyatt. So there must have been something there that I'm missing. Bray Wyatt's first appearance outside of WWE will be at the Dallas WrestleCon next year, which will take place during WrestleMania weekend.
On Raw next week, Becky Lynch will be defending her title against Liv Morgan, and according to WrestlingNews.co, Becky is set to also defend her belt at the Day 1 pay-per-view. The plan is for Becky to win the match on Raw and retain. Right now, WWE is promoting matches between Becky and Bianca Belair, so it seems Becky will retain on Raw at Day 1 and possibly go back into an angle with Bianca. On NXT this week, Joe Gacy teased an all-inclusive title as talks of ditching the Cruiserweight belt continue. While the original idea for the Cruiserweight title was that you had to be 205 pounds or less to compete for it, it seems this feud between Gacy and the current champion Roderick Strong could change that. This Sunday at War Games, Gacy will be looking to take that title from Strong, as we'll have to see what changes come to the championship after. Beth Phoenix is set to finish up her commentary duties for NXT at the pay-per-view this Sunday with her putting out this statement. Ahead of War Games, I wanted to share that this Sunday will be my final night on NXT. While I will remain a part of WWE, I've made the choice to step away from the weekly broadcast booth to spend more time with my family. This was not an easy decision, as I have loved my 3 plus years and 135 episodes with NXT and am incredibly proud of the brand. I will forever be grateful to Vic Joseph, Wade Barrett, Nigel Baganis, Tom Phillips, Mar Ranallo, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Michael Michael Cole, and my entire NXT family both in and out of the ring for the amazing opportunity. NXT will always be a part of me, and Auntie Betty will always be a part of NXT. Leave the porch light on for me. Following his time as a writer for WWE in 2008, actor Freddie Prince Jr. talked to Ariel Hawani about the releases by WWE and the amount of independent talent in the wrestling scene as he wants to start his own promotion. It makes me want to start a wrestling brand is what it makes me want to do. Everybody sees that and they get sad. I see it and I get hungry. I was in Karrion Cross's DMs for real the day his release happened. I was like, hey man, I didn't go back to work for fun. I went back to work to invest in things. Imagine having Keith Lee and Karrion Cross on the same roster making people wait to watch them fight, keeping their stories connected but separate, even if it was just indie shows, which is what it would have to be. I'm not trying to go in for $50 million or something, but there is so much talent out there now that I think people would love to watch. They literally had evil Macho Man Randy Savage and evil Elizabeth with Carrie and Scarlet. I love them. Then they separated them, bring him up, destroy his entire look. That kind of stuff makes me want to take my finances from one idea and put them into a brand new one, which I've flirted with before and maybe one day I'll do, but when I see those releases, it makes me think about it more seriously. On Raw, Liv Morgan made reference to those released by WWE during the contract signing with Becky Lynch. She said Becky's big contract was the reason her friends from the Riot Squad, Ruby Soho and Sarah Logan, were gone. Backstage personnel were apparently rubbed the wrong way by this line, according to Fightful. PW Insider would note that this was not Morgan's idea, as the line came from Vince McMahon or another member of the creative team. Now, WWE has removed this section of the video on YouTube. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.